Hi everyone. This video will show you how to mix, load, and place alginate. My demonstration will use a mannequin, but in practice, I find it easier to take on a real patient. There are a lot of steps involved. We need to try in the trays, make sure we have a good fit. If we need to modify the trays with wax, we can do so. You need your alginate spatula. Your alginate spatulas have this wider shaped blade. Uh, sometimes it's called a beaver tail spatula because it flares out like a beaver tail. We need a scoop specific to our alginate material. We'll be using Chromaclone, so this is the scoop that comes with Chromaclone. And they measure water in milliliters. So for every scoop of powder, we use 40 milliliters of water. Explain the procedure to your patient. Let them know what to expect, even if they've had impressions before. Let them know specifically what you're using. You can tell them, I'll be trying in these empty trays to make sure we get a good fitting tray. Once we're ready for the material, it will smell like bubble gum. It won't have much of a taste and it might feel cold. It'll have a thick consistency like putty, like a thick mashed potato consistency or a thick pudding consistency. Once it's placed in your mouth, I'll need you to breathe through your nose and it has to stay in your mouth for one minute until it sets up and then give the patient an opportunity to ask any questions. I already know these trays will fit because I've done this on the mannequin many times. But open up your trays. Max Leary tray is solid across the palate. Mandibular tray is U-shaped, room for the tongue. So those are the two different trays. To try these in. And using a mannequin with cheeks makes it a little more realistic, but they are clear so you can see kind of what's happening inside the cheeks. Try in your trays at an angle. I'll do mandibular first, so this has to be facing down. Retract one cheek with one hand. Insert at an angle, and that will help stretch out the opposite cheek. Seat the posterior first, and then swing the anterior down, making sure that the tray covers the retromolar area. Have the patient lift their tongue up and out, making sure it does not get trapped. If you have a good fit, you can remove the tray again at an angle. And you can ask the patient, did that pinch anywhere? If it pinched or if it felt like it was rubbing somewhere, we could add wax to the tray. If the tray was a little too short, maybe it was wide enough but not long enough, we could add wax to extend the length of the tray. So keep that in mind, you can modify these. Try in your maxillary tray, same thing, retract one side, insert the tray at an angle to help stretch out the opposite cheek, seat the posterior first, and then swing the anterior into position. Make sure their lips are outside of the tray. Now, seating a good tray for maxillary, make sure the tray extends past the tuberosity area, that it covers all the teeth. Also make sure that, let me pull their lip up here. Also make sure that the tray has a buffer zone between the tray and their teeth. We don't want to have the tray scraping against their front teeth. We need room for the impression material to sit. So don't just push it in as far as it will go. Let the tray come out of the patient's mouth slightly by about a quarter of an inch. 
If you have a good fit, remove your tray, again, add an angle and take it out. Once your trays are sized properly, we can then do our mixing. I've already measured out my 40 milliliters of water. Now for Chromaclone, you can go up to 45. Of course, that'll give you a looser, runnier mix. But when we're first starting out, that might be helpful. Chromaclone naturally mixes to a thicker consistency. That's for patient comfort, so it's not all runny in their mouth. It doesn't all run to the back of their throat. So first starting out, you could go up to 45, but 40 is the right measurement. Fluff your powder. Roll your powder around to fluff it. Again, that's using manufacturer's instructions. Take a fluffy scoop and level it off. Transfer it into a cup until you're ready to actually do your mix. Take another scoop, level it off. Put it in a cup until you're ready to mix. Now, alginate is affected by humidity, so you don't want your powder sitting out exposed to air for too long. And always recap your canister of powder. For best results, use room temperature distilled water. Remember, alginate is also temperature sensitive. If I use hot water, it will set up faster. I'll have less time to mix it. If I use cold water, it will take longer to set and I'll have more time to work with it. So I do have room temperature water, so I'll have about 30 seconds to mix, 30 seconds to load it into the tray and position it in the patient's mouth. A few things have to happen in a very short, matter of time. I need to dry the patient's teeth. So you can either use an air water syringe just before you insert the tray, or you can have them bite on some gauze. So have the patient either bite on gauze or be prepared to use your air water syringe just before you insert that tray to dry their teeth off. I have a cup of water right here because once I load my tray, I need to smooth out the surface with some water. And then when I take out the gauze, I'll take some excess alginate material and wipe it on the occlusal surfaces. And that will help reduce voids. It'll give me better anatomy, especially of that occlusal surface. And let me preface this by saying your patient's teeth should be clean. If you take an impression of dirty teeth, you're going to take an impression of that debris. So make sure they have clean teeth. No plaque, no food particles. Start with a clean mouth. The mixing technique. Once you add your powder to the water, and always add powder to water, we need to stir to incorporate the powder. And then we need to stir very vigorously by pressing the spatula against the wall of the bowl. And I'll show you what that looks like, but it happens very fast. It might be hard to capture on camera. So powder goes into the water, stir it. So all the powder gets wet. Let's see, I missed a little. Chromaclone is great because it changes colors. It starts out really dark pink and then it gets lighter. So now that it's all wetted, I'm turning the bowl and pressing the spatula firmly against the sides of the bowl. So rotate and press. Wipe the spatula on the sides of the bowl. So I'm really pressing the spatula against the bowl. That happens really fast. I'll do the maxillary first, so I scoop up all the material on my spatula. Take your maxillary tray, 
load it from the posterior and press it to the front. Don't do a lot of wiping back and forth. That just wastes time. Dunk your fingers into some water, smooth out the surface. The front of the tray should have more material than the back of the tray. So more material in the anterior, less in the posterior. It's getting very light pink, almost white. It's time to get it into the mouth. Remove your gauze, take a little excess material, wipe it on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Insert your tray at an angle. Press the posterior side up first. Keep their lip out of the way and press into the anterior region. Once you've pressed the tray into position, hold it here. We need to hold it until it sets. This material will take about one minute to set. Now that's in a real person. Their body heat will help set the alginate. Because this is a mannequin, it'll take probably two minutes to set. After you insert this muscle trim, take your fingers and massage their cheeks and their lips. That will help the material flow up into the vestibule to give you a good peripheral roll. Support it the entire time. Don't walk away. Have equal pressure on the left and right side of the tray. If you walk away, gravity can cause this to fall down. So you might be tempted to clean up your materials. Don't do that until the impression has set. So we'll come back in about a minute and we'll take this out so you can see how it looks. When you're ready to remove the tray, determine that the material is set first. You can see the excess material above the tray. If it feels firm and resilient, if you can't dig a fingernail mark into it, it's ready to come out. The easiest way to remove your trays, take an index finger on the posterior corner of the tray. Make sure you're pulling on the tray and not the impression material. When you do that on one side, use your other hand to give a firm pull down. Keep your fingers between the tray and their opposing arch so the metal tray doesn't accidentally snap down and hit their teeth. That just feels unpleasant. Sometimes you get a really good suction seal on your patients. You can ask them, now it won't work on a mannequin, but your patient can close their lips around the tray and blow, and that can force air up under the impression to help loosen it. So this, in my opinion, is the hardest part with mannequins. You know, loosen up both sides if you can, all the while pulling down on the anterior. Slide it out at an angle. Inspect your impression. You're looking for detailed anatomy. You don't want to see any voids or bubbles. The impression should be centered in the tray. So the two centrals should be right here at the center of the tray. We've captured all the teeth. The tuberosity area had a little issue with the material flowing back, so it's a little distorted back here. My peripheral roll is nice, a nice border around the impression. So inspect your impression, be able to evaluate. This would make a nice study model. When it comes out of the patient's mouth, rinse it, you might have a little bit of blood in here. You might have some food particles that you missed in preparation. So rinse it and then disinfect it. So I'll do that off screen. Once you rinse and disinfect your impression, wrap it in a moist paper towel. Remember, alginate is moisture sensitive. We need to pour it up within 15 minutes. So by the time you finish with the other impression and you dismiss your patient, 
we need to go to the lab and pour these up. Chromaclone itself is shelf stable for five days. What you'd have to do is put it in a 100% humid environment. So either a humidor or a plastic bag where you can put a damp paper towel. As long as the paper towel isn't touching the impression, you're good. Otherwise the impression will soak up that moisture. Seal it up and you can pour it within five days. Clean up your patient if they have any debris. Give them a rinse and a suction before you move on to the next arch. When you're ready to mix, we do the same process. Add powder to water. Give it a stir. Oops, a little bit of debris left over on that spatula. Give it a stir to incorporate your powder into the water. Once most of that powder is wet, start spinning your bowl and flexing your spatula back and forth, back and forth, really pressing it into the palm of your hand. I tell my students to get angry at that algae. You just wanna squash it like a bug. So you just wanna press it and you can go fast, you can go slow, as long as you get it all mixed up. For the mandibular impression, so you have a nice creamy mix, there's no leftover powder in the bowl, take half of it. Load your tray from the inside, the lingual side, push it forward. Take the other half of your material. Load it from the other lingual side, load it, push it to the anterior. Again, you want more in the front of the tray than in the back. Dunk your fingers, smooth out the surface with wet fingers. Take any excess off the back. Dry the patient's teeth, either air water syringe or have them bite on some gauze. Take a little excess material, a little extra, wipe it on the occlusal surfaces. then insert at an angle. Have the patient lift their tongue up and out so it doesn't get trapped. Seat the posterior first and then swing the anterior down into position and watch for that alginate to squish out the front. Same thing, hold it in place so it doesn't move around and muscle trim. Massage their cheeks and lips to really shape that impression material into their vestibule. And wait your minute until it sets up. As far as operator positioning goes, some operators like to stand behind the patient. I prefer standing behind for maxillary impressions and I prefer standing in front of the patient for mandibular impressions. It depends on how easily you can see what you're doing. I like to keep an eye on the alginate as well as the patient. I can see their reactions if they're getting a little irritated or having a difficult time with this material. I can talk to them. I can encourage them to breathe through their nose, to cross and uncross their legs, to keep their mind off of having this in their mouth for a minute. So let's come back after a minute We'll take a look at this impression. All right, after your material is set, again, determine that by pressing on the material. It should have some resistance. It should feel very firm and should not keep an indentation of a fingernail mark. Same thing here, lift up on a posterior corner of the tray with one hand while the other hand is pulling straight up on the handle. Again, for me, this is the biggest challenge with these mannequins. Lift, remove it at an angle, being very careful. Don't let anything fall off. Try not to tear it. 
don't purposefully pull. I know a lot of times students like to play with the little flaps or little pieces that fall off. Let's take a look at it. We've captured very good detail of the dental anatomy, a nice peripheral roll all the way around the border, uh, mylohyoid ridge you can kind of see down here. We do have a little burnout. I did not have quite enough material back here. So this can still be used for a study model. It can be used for whitening trays, sports mouth guard. It's still a good impression and it just depends on what you're going to use it for, whether or not you have to do a retake. But we have no voids, really no burnout. I can see up here a little bit. You can see the tray through it. Back here, I just did not have enough material. But I can still pour this up and get a, a very good study model from it. Again, rinse it to rinse the debris out, saliva, blood, bits of food that might have been left behind. Disinfect it with an intermediate level disinfectant and then wrap it in a damp paper towel. So I'll do that off screen. Now that I have both of my impressions wrapped, I can take these to the lab and pour them up after I dismiss my patient. Assist your patient in cleaning up. They may uh, like a, a damp towel to wipe their face, help with flossing their teeth. Uh, you may give them a complimentary toothbrush so they can brush their teeth, mouth rinse to get this excess alginate out. So there you have a demonstration on alginate procedure. Hopefully it's been helpful and maybe can help you improve your technique if you're having troubles. Thank you for watching.